Hey, good morning, Atomic Hillbilly. And I'm heading out solo this morning, heading out to an auction that's actually, uh, you know, it's about an hour and 15, 20 minutes from our home. And an area that I've never been before, auction company I've never been to before, but they got some cool stuff, things that are, uh, you know, right up my alley. So no clue if it's gonna be packed out, small, bargains, sky high, but uh, that's all part of the auction business, I guess, is uh, you never know. You know, if you stick around or you go to the right one, you get some screaming deals, you go to another one, you sit around all day, you don't get anything. But, you know, again, that's part of the picking game. So, uh, you know, I'm used to it. And it is an area, again, we've not really explored in the past. So I'm hoping maybe I can find some cool things uh, to check out nature-wise, antique shops, anything of that nature. So looking forward to the travel, guys. Let's see what we can get. Looks to be a fair crowd here already. So, you know, there may not be no bargains here today, but we're gonna take a look and hope our best. Maybe we'll get some deals. All right, guys, hopefully this video has me centered in the screen, at least where you can see me and hear me. Roll my window up here so we can hear better. But, uh, so I've left the auction. It was, uh, it was a pretty good day. I, I had my doubts up front. There was a, not a large crowd there today, but they were spending the money. So, you know, good for the auctioneer, good for the estate or, or whatever the case was with this particular auction. Uh, most of the things that I set out to get that were advertised on the, uh, on the internet that I seen that drew me to the auction today, I did wind up getting, uh, there was two uh, RC Cola thermometers probably from the 1960s that I didn't get. That, you know, I just, I bid on them, but the gentleman that was bidding against me got both of them. And, uh, you know, I was just strictly looking at those to flip them. So, you know, I didn't feel that there was a lot of, a lot of room left in them for what they went for. They went for about, uh, I think about $50, $55 a piece is what they wound up bringing. And, you know, I felt that they were about $75 pieces. Uh, Anyways, uh, not the most pleasant auctioneers to be there with uh, today. You know, they. Uh, I like going to an auction where it's 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 pleasing. The auctioneer has a good chant, and they're uh, entertaining, and the volume's not too crazy, and uh, you know, it just helps your day go by better. But I did wind up staying there pretty much all day. Uh, they did move very slow, uh, for a long time they moved very slow, but to give them credit, everything they sold brought good money. So they, you know, they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, but again, I don't know if you can see what you can see in my vehicle, but I will, you know, show everything when I get to the house, but I did score some great stuff. You know, there was a slot car track that I wanted, I got it, I spent a little more on it than maybe it was worth but some of the other stuff you know I spent less on it than what I intended to spend so for me you know it all equals out in the end if I get a screaming deal on one thing and pay a little more for something else you know it, it just kind of all evens out in the end so anyways but this auction today was up in a small town uh, in Centerville Tennessee which again me looking back you know it, 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 it struck me as something that maybe we had been there before my son used to play sports back when he was in uh, school and uh, it did strike me as a town that we may have went to at least once for him to play basketball or, or whatever uh, against that team but I, I don't recall the road just seemed familiar but uh, you know, again, it was overall a good day. The morning started off, it was pretty brisk. I had a sweatshirt on and shorts. And, uh, you know, I got a little cool for a little while, but then the sun came out and uh, it just turned out to be an absolutely spectacular day. Uh, 71 degrees is what it is right now, which I think the temperatures are actually coming back down. I think the weatherman said this morning it was supposed to peak out about 74, 75 degrees today. And uh, I feel that it got there because, again, I took my sweatshirt off, wore a t-shirt and shorts all day long. It's extremely comfortable and just a beautiful day. But again, got some great items. You know, I got a mid-century modern chair. I got a little mid-century modern bar cart. I got the slot car track. I got a uh, 
piece of old glassware. I'm not a big glassware guy, but you know, they were begging to give it away, so I bought it. And uh, I don't know what all I got. Some stereo equipment, not super old stereo equipment, but it seems like it's fairly collectible, like it sells pretty good online. So I got a smoking deal on some stereo equipment. Uh, I got a receiver, an amplifier, and a turntable. bumper jack for a 1967 Chevrolet and so anyways overall a great day and I almost almost forgot about the mid-century modern chair it was literally buried in a room in the basement of this house and one of the auctioneers told me you know they put off going into the basement until the very end of the sale and one of the auctioneer's assistants, he told me, he said, if there's something in there you want sold individual, you better go grab it because we're going to go in there and start selling things by the room full, you know. So, so uh, again, I almost forgot it. I was, I was ready to leave. I actually had cashed out once, and I thought, well, all that's left was, um, you know, one or two pieces out back that I was, that I was interested in. And I thought, yeah, you know, when I get those, I'm out of here. And then I remembered the chair, and thankfully, I got the chair for a screaming deal. And again, I'll show it to you when I get to the house, get everything out. And uh, I'm just going to set it out the way that I got it. I'm not going to clean anything up to so see see what this stuff looks like. You know, when you buy it from auctions, you know, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's buried in the basement. And nobody knows what it is or where it was from. So, But I actually did talk with one of the heirs of the estate. And this chair actually was his it, you know he brought it from his house and he was the original owner of it he said he had pictures of his young son sitting in this chair back when he was a kid and so so pretty cool you know i i, I thought i would have some competition on it but absolutely nobody even looked at this thing so i love it that's the best thing about auctions so again i think i may have already said this but i stayed there about five hours and that's really you know, if you've not been to auctions or you're fairly new to auctions, you know, some of the tricks at an auction is patience, man. You gotta be patient. You know, a lot of people, they go and they wanna go get the thing they want and move it on the table so they get to it sooner. Well, the downside there is, guess what? There's more people still at the auction. And the auction's still fresh. Most people haven't spent their budget if they have a budget when they came to the auction. So. You know, if you're patient and you really don't have to be anywhere and the weather's pleasant and there's other things at the auction besides that one thing, then it's worth your while to stick around and just wait. Wait for the auctioneers to bring it out and wait for it to see if it's going to go for a bargain. Because as the day wears on, you know, there's going to be more and more people leaving the auction. You know, that they, they, they bought what they wanted or they ran out of patience and they've gone home or they had a prior commitment, whatever the case may be. So again, that's one of the tricks with the auction is patience. Just be patient, you know, just wait for your item to come up. Even though with this chair, I did grab it in the basement, but we had already trickled down to, you know, basically what I call the bottom feeders, you know, the last few uh, holdouts for the auction, looking for the end of the day deals, the rooms or the table folds, you know, whatever the case may be. So again, that's one of your tricks for an auction. And another one is, you know, when you're bidding, if if you know what you're willing to spend on an item, you know, don't don't start on the high end. If the auctioneer says, you know, hey, I want 75 bucks to start that thing, and you you're willing to spend 100, unless you really want it, don't throw your arm up at 75 bucks because odds are the auctioneer is going to keep working down 50, maybe even down to 25, maybe even as low as 10 bucks. You know, you don't know where anybody else is going to bid or if anybody else is going to bid. So you let the auctioneer chisel it down until somebody throws a bid out or it gets so low that you throw the opening bid out and then work your way back up. But when you're working your way back up, if you know, again, if you know you're willing, you're willing to spend a hundred bucks on an item, don't hesitate. If the auctioneer takes your bid, takes another person's bid and comes back to you, bid, you know, just bid because experienced auction people, they know, they can tell when they're wearing their competition down. And again, that's kind of the trick. Most people that attend auctions on a regular basis know this. 
you know, they know to go in and just bid. Don't hesitate, bid, 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 bid. You know, until you reach your maximum or if you rethink it and you're willing to give a little bit more, just bid, bid, bid. Don't get caught up in the frenzy. You know, a lot of people will go and they'll think, well, I'm willing to spend a hundred bucks on that. And then they get caught up in the frenzy or the auctioneer applies a little bit of pressure on them. And they wind up spending more than they originally intended on the item. So, you know, again, these are just some pointers. I've gone to auctions for many, 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 many years. And, uh, you know, I've learned, trust me, I've been there. I've, I've made my mistakes, I've learned from my mistakes. So that's really the two biggest points I can give you for an auction is patience and just when you want something, you know what you're willing to spend on it, be aggressive with your bids. And I think you'll go home successful from that. So, Anyways, we are going to, uh, you know, I'm going to be home here in about maybe another half an hour. And I get home, get my items unloaded, set them up, and we'll complete this video. And uh, some of it I'm keeping, most of it's for sale. So watch for it. All right, guys. So this is my haul from the auction today. And this is... Uh, this is actually being quite in control for me. Normally, I struggle to pass up a bargain, but uh, anyways, with our, our recent move and uh, you know discovering just how much stuff we have piled up everywhere, I've been uh, kind of low-key on picking. But anyway, so we got the the mid-century modern bar cart here. It's not the coolest one I've ever seen, but it was a bargain. I think I gave five bucks for that. And the vintage Halloween masks, they were in a bag of Halloween stuff uh, that I think I gave like two bucks for. And uh, two motorcycle helmets. And the black one here, this is actually an Arthur, Arthur Fulmer. So it's a little scratched off back there, but it is an Arthur Fulmer. And they're not, uh, you know, they're not high dollar, but they, they sell pretty good. And every once in a while, this is a newer one. You can see it's got the seam in it from the, uh, from the mold. So this one, I suspect, is not even uh, fiberglass, but haven't really looked at it. But, you know, it's not in that great of shape, and I suspect it's, it's fairly newer as far as motorcycle helmets go. So DOT tag on it. And the Aurora... Uh, slot car track that was one of the things that I went for don't know if it's complete I did see one car body in there um, that I don't even think is correct for the kit but again I didn't even dig through it you know they got to it and I just bid on it and I own it and the cool fiberglass lampshade it was actually on this lamp here and they couldn't even get anybody to bid on it. I didn't want it really, but they got down to two bucks. And I said, well, you need two bucks for a fiberglass lampshade. So the lamp's collateral damage. Uh, I'll sell it in my antique booth. The best find of the day, the scoop chair. <clears throat> I've not researched it yet, but I, I had one identical to this uh, a few years ago. And for the life of me, I can't remember anything about it, who made it or whatever. This one is in much, much better shape than the one that I had before. And as you can see, you know, it's got some stains in it, but uh, I, I might actually approach uh, somebody and see if they can clean this thing up for me because it's not tore at all. And so, uh, you know, again, I'm gonna sell it. It's definitely going up for sale. I love it, but it's just not my style. We got this little antique uh, corner or whatnot uh shelf and again the gentleman uh actually the gentleman that owned the scoop chair said this was in his parents home which apparently was the estate today and uh he said it had been in their home for as far back as he could remember and i think he said he was about 64 years old so uh my, one of my personal favorites though right here Got these two cool Batman, and they're the same thing on both sides, uh, you know, so they're identical. But I got two of them, so I can display each side. And uh, 66 in there. So this is the original Batman, and they are Westfield. 
Again, haven't looked them up, but I wanted those for myself, so I didn't care. And cool little eggnog uh, milk glass bowl. And again, I'm not much into glassware, but they got down to next to nothing on that. This was the first thing I bought, and for a while I thought it was going to be the only thing I bought. It. They said it was cast iron, and I, I, I believe it's cast aluminum, and it looks like somebody's project uh, that made the, the base for it to be on, maybe, I don't know. And just some miscellaneous trays, trinket junk. That uh, that was a package deal with the eggnog bowl. And then the stereo equipment. Again, this is Pioneer. Uh, all three pieces are Pioneer. They all mate. Uh, you know, they're the same basic part numbers or model numbers, I guess you will. And, uh, you know, again, they're not super old and they're not the... Uh, most expensive stuff out there, but nobody was even interested in them. So I got these cheap. I think I gave five bucks a piece for each one of these. So I got $15 invested in that. Altogether, today, I do believe I spent $102.50 for everything you see here. So great day. Again, long day. And that's part of Part of going to an auction is you gotta you gotta be prepared to sit there and wait till they bring your items up for sale and hope that with all that said and done that you're the high bidder for the day so anyways guys uh take my glasses off here again not the best video you know i wish i would have had the opportunity to film at the auction today but being there by myself it was a little tricky and i stood off from the crowd i'm 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 COVID-19 nervous and it's it's kind of uh, the numbers are kind of high here in Tennessee so I'm trying to avoid crowds so I just stood back so some of this stuff you know I bought it really not even knowing what it was because the auctioneer would hold it up like the uh, cast aluminum thing uh, you know when he held that up same with the eggnog bowl um, you know I was quite a ways off from them when they sold this stuff and I just didn't want to get up to the crowd. So, so again, it was difficult for me to try to do any video down there today or up there, I should say. Uh, and, you know, and they split off into two auction rings uh, towards the end of the day, which made it more difficult. But on a good note is I was at the end of the house where I could just dart back, look, see what, you know, this auctioneer was selling, go look behind the house and see what that auctioneer was selling because my slot car track and the motorcycle helmets were behind the house. The scoop chair was in the basement, which was part of the auction team that was in the backyard. And everything else, I believe, was in the front yard. So uh, several of the pieces I had already bought before they split off into two rings. But again, it was, it was a good day. It was a fun day. It was a long day. And I think there's some decent money here to be made, so. Uh, not, again, not much really that I plan on keeping. Um, I think the only thing I really want to keep for myself is the Batman cups. That's it. Everything else will be up for sale. If you're interested in anything at all, comment down below and maybe we can work something out. Otherwise, this stuff's going to wind up finding its way online or into my antique booth. So guys, again, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, like, comment, share, and do all that stuff for our channel. Help make it a success. And we're hoping to bring you a bunch more videos. We're going to start bringing you a series of our favorite picks, things that we've already picked in the past, and just go through our personal private collection, which is 99.5% mid-century modern, and just show you some of the favorite things that we picked over the years. And if my memory holds up, what I paid for it, where I might have been when I bought it. So watch for those videos, guys. Again, thank you.